my hair looks like right now, it would be classified as a layered haircut, a shag, or a wolf cut. My shortest layers are up here at around five inches, I would say, maybe a little more. And then my next set of layers is right at my chin length. These actually grew out from being around this short. And then I have my last set of layers right here. I'm just gonna go through my hair care routine and I guess today's wash routine since it's wash day. Currently, my color is also fading from layers of pink, then blue blaze, blue base black, and then a couple or few layers of brown on top of that. And so right now it looks kind of like an oil slick, ashy rainbow type. I think it looks really cool. I'm planning to let it fade and kind of look oil slicky and holographic dark kind of until I go over to the warm darks like burnt orange and dark red and burgundy. Mmm! I will be styling my hair this exact same texture and style. Sometimes I do like to do curls and sometimes I like to wear it kind of messy and texturized like this because I think it looks really good with my layers. And I'll just show you my whole process. I do like to cycle through my shampoos. I don't stick with one shampoo all the time because I'm testing new products all the time. And recently I discovered the Botanical Repair from Aveda and these are a line of plant-based, vegetable-based hair bonding products. And sometimes I'll just shampoo once. Sometimes I do have to use shampoo twice. It smells very herbal. And then I'll go into a scalp exfoliator. I don't do this every time, but um, I've been recently trying to incorporate it into my routine to get a lot of the buildup in my scalp. There's some sea salt scrub with this scalp scrub from I Do Care. And I feel like it leaves my skin feeling very, very, very stripped of all oil, product, buildup, flakes, dandruff, everything. It just feels so clean after that I know my hair care products afterwards just gonna soak up into my hair. I have never used a scalp massager before, but I hear that it helps your hair grow because it stimulates your scalp and brings more blood circulation into your scalp in order to grow better, longer, and faster. So uh, let's, let's see how this goes. I know that it does feel very, very relaxing, so that is a immediate benefit but it is made with these very soft bristles and you just use it when you're cleansing your scalp with shampoo or a exfoliator. I wouldn't recommend using this with a conditioner or a mask because you normally are not supposed to be placing conditioners or masks into the scalp area because it will clog up your pores. So the only thing you want on your scalp is either shampoos or scalp cleansers or scalp serums and scalp ampoules or scalp uh, toners. Now, as I mentioned, I am trying to fade out my hair color right now. I don't really know what's going on, but I did use um, Overtone and Glaze's coloring conditioners. Glaze is more like a coloring gloss and Overtones is a coloring repigmenter. This is the daily conditioner. And I've used this a couple times each, I would say, to refreshen the brown color on my hair. But now that it's fading into this really cool, kind of ashy, oil slick, dark, holographic rainbow vibe, I'm just letting it run its course. But for now, I have not been using my brown reconditioners, but I will be utilizing the clear shine gloss called Sheer Glow, I believe, from Glaze Hair, and that will help my hair look glossier, and it does last up to 10 washes, just coating your hair, making your hair look really nice. And I'll just finish up my shower routine, just wash my skin with Kopari's Hydrating Vitamin C Shower Oil, which keeps my skin super, super soft due to the coconut oil, avocado oil, and cleansing agents in this cleansing oil. And then I'll hop out of the shower and do my after wash hair care. <laughs> now before we get into the after shower hair care routine, I do want to mention that sometimes I do use <gasps> castor oil. <laughs> <laughs> into my roots and scalp before my shower. 
Um, I've only actually used it the night before my wash day, but I feel like it's more recommended to use it a few hours before. Hello. Hello, baby. I'll have my hand. Oh. <laughs> Bye. It just helps moisturize my scalp and also my roots. And I actually find that my hair produces less oil throughout the week because of this oiling. Now the reason why I don't use conditioner right after my shampoos or exfoliators on my scalp is because after I get out of the shower, I use K18 right away. This is a molecular repair hair mask that travels deep into the hair to repair the peptide bonds in the innermost part of the hair four layers deeper than other bond repairs. And I do use other bond repairs like Olaplex or Joyco overnight repair or the botanical repair from Aveda as well to complement extra hair bonding due to my bleach damage. But I do have to apply this all over my mids, my ends, and let that just soak in, penetrate into the hair cuticles and into the hair shaft for four minutes while I do my scalp care. And then I can move on with the rest of my afterwash hair care and my styling. For scalp care, I use one scalp toner and two scalp serums. One is a serum and one is an ampoule. And they all come in the same kit from Ovaco that is available on Amazon. And I'll have all of the links to the products that I use in today's wash routine in the description for your convenience. But it usually takes me like four minutes to apply all three of these on my scalp. So it works out perfectly with the timing that I do need to leave K18 on my ends. And then I'll go in with a leave-in treatment like the rest of my leave-in treatments and my serums. I like to rotate them to just test out other products and see which one works for me for the day. Sometimes I'll use conditioner and not use K18 at all and instead use a deep conditioning mask. So it really depends what I feel like during my wash routine. And if you want a more detailed ultimate wash routine for bleach damaged hair, I will link my video right up here in this corner. You can select the little eye and that will take you to my more in-depth hair care video for my new intensive 20 step, 200 step hair care recovery routine. This is the strengthening leave-in treatment and I just apply it right after I let the K18 set for four minutes. Hello, Mina. She's back. Oh, it's so bright here. <laughs> it's so bright. Oh no, it's so bright in here. Mina, you have to go out. It's too bright in here. It's hurting your eyes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, see you. See you later. It's like pitch black out there, and I have my studio light on right now. It's so bright for her. She was like... And then I apply my serum and my oil, which helps to rehydrate my hair and also smooth out the hair cuticle so there's less future damage and also seals in the moisture and seals in every other product that I've used through this whole routine. For styling my hair, I like to keep it really simple and just focus on air styling because whenever I use extra heat on my hair with straighteners or with curling irons. It's just another step for me because I have to blow dry my hair anyway. I blow dry my roots first and a little bit of my ends and then I go in with my air styler and recently to get this kind of tousled, voluminous movement texture in my hair without looking too curly, I like to use my air wrap wand on my Dyson air wrap and just blow dry one section at a time just straight down and then curl in the ends and that way it gives me like a really nice blowout effect on my hair without leaving too many curls in my hair at the same time. I do like to use this wand for really big big waves as well but recently with this haircut I've been really liking that subtle texturized messy kind of squid game <laughs> hairstyle look. So this hairstyle kind of dies down after several days of sleeping on it, wearing it throughout the week, and then what you saw in the beginning of the video is actually how it ends up. So I really love 
how like tousled and texturized it is. I have a lot of layers and movement in my hair. And I can just like kind of push it back to give it volume again throughout the day. I do have different ways that I like to style my shag or wolf cut or layered haircut with different tools. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial with different ways you can style this haircut, if you're interested in getting it, it is trending for the last like a year or maybe more. <laughs> it's very in right now and I know a lot of people are getting lots of layers and the layers can be a bit tricky to style. So let me know if you'd like to see a series on that. And this is a video YouTube recommends you to watch next. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Sleeping bone.